Today I join you with my beautiful sister. Say hello, Victoria. Hello, Victoria. <laughs> Vicky is a qualified hair and makeup artist, is that correct? Yes. I wanted to do like a little a Q&A video with you, if that is okay, related to hair. What have you done? Like, give me like a little short summary about what you've done in your life to do with it. Well, I've done three years in college. I'm currently on a makeup theatre hair um, course <laughs> now at uni. <laughs> so basically, she's had a lot of experience. You're in a COVID scarf. <laughs> So to go ahead with this Q&A, I asked you guys on my Facebook page, link down there in my cleavage, things that she, <laughs> things that you would like to know about hair, basically. If you had the chance to sit down with a hairdresser and ask a few questions which maybe you're too embarrassed to ask before or you've just never known the answer for, then what would you ask? There's almost 90 questions that people want to know. Hit me. Let's get crack a lacking. <laughs> Mirelli Gibbs asks, does a hairdresser know what a trim is? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that they, they Do you want to know the honest answer? Yes, we would like to know the gory details of a hairdresser. Probably they don't. When I was in college and clients came in and they asked for a trim, I knew someone in my class, her hair was down to literally her bottom and she thought a trim was quite a bit and she cut it right up to her shoulders. No one actually told her what a trim was. And so, obviously a trim is a definition of tidying up your split ends. The hairdresser normally cuts the hair to what they think should come off, really. So they cut it until they think it's healthy? Yeah. So if you were to come into a hairdresser's with really damaged bad hair and ask for a trim, they would just cut off all the damage? Yeah. As much as they can? But instead, if you only want a little bit off, I'd say, instead of ask for a trim, ask for half an inch off. Yes. Because an inch is actually, if you got that with your thumb, when you bend it, it's about that length. So if you want half an inch, it's also about this. That is very wise information. I think a lot of people will make use of. Thank you. Scotty Stanley asks, how do I get my hair to grow faster? All these products and everything they bring out, all these shampoos and treatments for the hair. I suppose they help, but nothing really helps other than um, a good diet. Sunlight sometimes helps, but obviously not too much. Um, regular cut every four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. I think deep oil treatments, mm. but sort of the hot oil, because then it gets right into the cuticle. Mm. Just also when you wash your hair, be nice to it. Like when you wash it and then you brush it afterwards. Try and like comb it when you're in the shower and talk to it. It's sometimes and sing. Yeah. See, I like I'm obsessed with trying to get my hair to grow, and I really want my hair to be really long. But you've got to have it like trimmed, like every what was it? Four to six weeks. If you want that to happen, but probably the majority of people watching this are like me and say. If I want my hair to grow, why should I cut it? Which is what I think too, but it's not right. Like, you would notice that when you have a trim, it, like if your hair is growing like this, look, and then you have a trim, it will go through a growth spell like that, and then it grows like this. So follow that, because I don't. David Golding, how could you come up with a haircut that's never been done before? I guess you could kind of look at one person's hair and then another and like combine it to make something really unique. I think a lot of things have been done. Well, I've got an app on my phone, it's a hairstyle app, and you can go on drastic, unusual hair cuts on that, and that's got really strange things. Yeah, and also like the magazines, but it depends what sort of, if you're after fashion hair. If you like big crazy hair, you should look at, um, in Google, it's avant-garde, and it's very sort of fashion catwalk hair, and um, it's really like, they put like cages on their hair, and wire, and trees. <laughs> I once saw a man that made a bowl out of his beard and he ate noodles from it. See? <coughs> Hannah Elizabeth Lafferty asks, I want to dip dye the ends of my hair, but would they be damaged much? If so, how do I keep them healthy and shiny? First of all, it depends how dark your hair is in the first place and if you've had previous hair colour put on it. Because if it's black or very dark, you're also going to use a stronger peroxide. Yeah, a lot of people asking if they want to have ombre hair how do they go about it without bleach? Or is it something you have to do? I'd say it has to be bleach, but it can be a very, not as strong, so, it, so it's like a 10%, so it just sort of like lifts it very slowly. Or some people even use um, lemon in their hair, so sort of like bleach it a little bit. I've tried that when I was younger, but it didn't really do a lot. Isn't it just like a very, you could do, use a very light peroxide? Yeah, it'd be a 10 volume. You can get ombre like boxes now. Yeah, you can get the packs. 
in yeah, the shops because everyone was doing it. Yeah, I think it contains like a little cone. So you sort of get the natural effect. But obviously if you want it lighter then you just keep putting a 10 volume or 20 volume because you've got like a colour shade for going like very dark brown. So you'll see very light blonde. And each level, like 10, 20, 30 or 40, it means each level. So 10 is one, 20 is two. Sort of each change in the level. To keep it healthy, would you just keep it trimmed and then conditioned? Yeah, you, you could you could easily just put it in conditioner each night and just maybe even sleep in with the conditioner. Just at the bottom of all your hair. You don't just nothing's bad with conditioner even in or even night. You can't yeah, with bleached hair it doesn't matter leaving conditioner in, but if you had like coloured hair and you left conditioner in, it would probably take all the colour out. No, blonde doesn't matter, because no. obviously bleach has no colour. Bleach is there to take out your colour. I would think if you're using straighteners a lot, wouldn't you avoid straightening it too much at the ends and just instead blow dry it if you want it straightened? The end of the hair is going to be the most damaged and you're putting a heated iron on that. It's just going to literally break and split the ends. Not good. If somebody wanted to use bleach on their hair but they're worried about it, would you advise peroxide instead? Because a lot of the questions were about... There are different questions but the main part of the question was they're scared to use bleach. Well, bleach is in most things, even like in the hairdressers when they're saying, oh, we're going to lighten up your hair. That's just a nicer way of saying bleach. Mm. The bleach as as they, if, Yeah, as soon as you say bleach, all the clients sort of froze and went, oh, yeah, but isn't that going to, like, damage my hair? Is there different types of bleach? Is there stronger bleach? No, bleach is bleach. You either get... The blue pow powder bleach is for pre-coloured hair, and if you're trying to lighten it, and it also takes out the yellow brassiness tone, but then you could get the white powder bleach that does the same, but it's for more, like if you haven't coloured your hair before. But I would advise more blue powder bleach because that takes out the yellow and sort of very brassy colours that you sometimes get in your hair. Obviously don't exceed the time of 45 minutes because that can be quite dangerous. And I have seen people um, in college where they comb the hair and they've opened the foil and it's literally just fallen off when they've um, taken it off, like the whole hair. But um, <laughs> bleach is more of a watching process than the timing. If you put the bleach in foils and you add heat to it, like put a, um, some clean film over your head, and that sounds a bit silly, but you're trying to keep the heat in and that does make it work faster. So don't leave it in for too long and don't do it too often. Yeah. I think a load of people want to have coloured hair, but they're just so worried about the bleach thing. Wouldn't you just leave it on for as much as you are okay with your hair for looking, and then just put colour on top, even though it would be a darker colour, it will still come out in a nice, whatever colour you want. Because it goes from a stage of brown, then obviously the lighter brown, then it goes a very bright orange. And that's when people panic and take it off, but then it will go to a yellow. And then sometimes it stop, which then you might have to wash that off, and if it's still too bright, and then you might have to add some more bleach. But it depends how much of that colour you want to show up. But if it's a brassy orange and you're going to blue, that blue will just completely cover it. You don't need to worry about that because um, it's such a staining colour. If you want to have bright hair, then maybe bleach will have to be the answer. I'm sorry, there were so many questions about how you can use something else instead of bleach. But if there was something, I think everybody would be using it. <laughs> Chelsea Allen asks... How can I get rid of the brassy colour in blonde hair without bleaching again? Well, there's a th it's a, a colour wheel, and because your hair's an orange, the opposite to the colour wheel of that is to use a purple or blue. So you need to shampoo or a conditioner. And I said it in Boots Super Jog or the um, Sally's store. It's a silver shampoo, but if you open it up, it's a very dark purple. And I'd say the darker the purple, the more it's gonna take out the yellow. It literally like you're washing it on your hair and it picks out the yellow and washes it out for you. And you can use that up to, well I've used it up to three times the first time but they say you're not meant to use it really more than three times a week. I can't see any harm in that really but if your hair is very, like if you're going for the white look and you sometimes use this purple, I did use it once on my hair. And it went purple? Yeah and it did sort of take on the purple a little bit but only for that first wash and then it just washes out afterwards. Or you can get um, leave-in conditioners, which comes like a little test tube. I think it just sort of um, neutralises and sort of cancels out the yellow tones. Um, but if it's really yellow and you sort of go into a hairdresser's, they probably might advise you to put another bleach on that. Have a sort of purple made up of with peroxide that they will put on your hair and have to leave it on for like 30 minutes or so, which I did have once. Cheyenne Ferguson asks, where can I get permanent purple hair dye? They're slowly bringing it in, 
like trying to make it go on your hair, like to stick around. But um, <laughs> that's why they've only got the red and purple and sort of bright coppers at the moment. So you get a violet or plum looking colour and have the peroxide in that and that'd be sort of permanent. I've yeah. used that before. But nothing as bright as sort of the XXL or the crazy colours. The X Live XXL, are they, they're semi-permanent aren't they? Well they say they're permanent yeah, but I've I mean. never had regrowth of it. Well you have to use semi-permanent in a colour you really want because they don't have permanent and then just put the same dye in like your uh, conditioner and then you just top it up all the time instead of having something which is permanent or stay permanent because I don't think there's many hair dyes that is and that's the only thing I can advise when it comes to that because that's what I had to do in the end. When you condition your hair it will take some of it out so whilst you condition it you're also putting some in. Saskia Anderson asks how can I get and manage a side fringe with having a cow's lick in your fringe area and a lot of other questions were to do with how you train it to stay to the side and not like go off in its own little world. Well obviously because it's a very permanent hairline it depends how high and thick your hair is and how much it wants to be on that certain side. I don't know if you've tried like when you wash the hair and then sort of blow dry it with a brush very close in the to the direction. Sort of, yeah. The way, which way you want to go and also use different products before that maybe like a, a styling sort of spray or something just not as thick as wax but trying to sort of dry it in that direction maybe also when you hair dry it and it's still quite warm maybe like put a grip or something and it sometimes does stick down a little bit mm. more because then obviously when the hair's cooling down it will probably help to stick it down a little bit more. I used to sleep with a grip in my hair and then in the morning take it out and it would just stay there. Yeah, I do that. Or when it's wet, just kind of brush it to where you want it to fall when it's dry and then just hair dry it down in that direction and it, usually, it just stays. Yeah, then you could throw on some hairspray. Just a little throw bit. Throw on that. hairspray. <laughs> just a little bit just to help it, but I can imagine cow's lip being very annoying. I'll put your advice to sort of work with it more though. Instead of against it because it will look obvious that you're trying to do something it's not. I don't know you always tend to want to brush it back more like with no fringe whatsoever but then it depends what sort of person you are because a lot of people have fringes because they're quite a shy person so probably they want to sort of cover themselves a little bit. I'm pretty sure you could look up like hairstyles that would suit a cow's lick, couldn't you? Yeah it all depends on your face shape yeah. Josie, don't know if I'm saying that right, how can I thin my hair out it's way too thick well, if you go to the hairdressers and say, oh my god, I've got too much hair, <laughs> and then the way they do it is either um, sort of when they hold the hair up, they sort of chop into it, making the, um, some of the hair very short, or the other way is razoring. It's literally just holding the hair, and with a very a sharp razor, you just sort of go along the hair, but that's taken out weight, but nothing off the length. I probably most of the time do it myself, especially with my fringe. It gives sort of a very edgy look. Pink. She has very um Oh yeah. <laughs> she's right there. Cut up. Sort of wacky hair. Um to thin out your hair, don't you just get a load of and a load of layers put in it? Yeah, it's very short layers, because obviously So layers that's a lot of hair up here is making this thinner. And razoring is just literally making it all very sort of wacky and everything. Shorter in some places so it doesn't look so thick when it's put together, isn't it? Yeah, and when I say razor it can be literally a cheap razor, like a shaving razor. I know it sounds really bad, but that's the same. Isn't that one? Thing. Is that a razor? Yeah, it's one I had in college, I haven't used it in a while. But the actual bit inside is just literally a razor. But don't go too full on. What do you basically because do? Because it will cut off all the hair. Just run it down your hair? Yeah, just very lightly over the hair. Try and do it on wet hair because on dry hair it does tend to rip the hair and can quite damage it quite a bit. And the last question is from myself. Um, hello. Do you hello. have any tips on how to remove hair colour from your hair? Like for me for instance, if I wanted to get rid of my red so I can change colour, you can't really do it from red to something else. What would I have to do? If, <laughs> if you've dyed it sort of like a blue colour, like, like mine actually, which it's just looking really bad at the moment because I'm in process of dyeing it a different colour which I'm sure I'll show you guys very soon but if it's from blue and it's going very green and you're like what some people see it as is, uh, using washing up liquid rubbing it together and then washing out exactly as your, as your shampoo <laughs> yeah yeah the eye shine I, um, picks out hair colour and I think it's a very deep hair shampoo but then also you can use that instead of using colour protect shampoos just go for very deep like cleaning shampoos, you know, it really sort of gets in there. <laughs> deep conditioner? 
I wouldn't say much will come out of using the deep conditioner if I put it on my hair with this blue. It's only for you when you do it on yours because yours is so red for anything like any water to be on your hair before you just drip out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I will go out in the rain, it'll be all over my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so there we have it guys. If you liked the idea of this video and you maybe would want to ask a few more questions, you can drop them down here and if there's enough people have liked this then maybe we'll do another. Maybe. Because this little awkward one here doesn't want to start a YouTube channel. But I want to put all her knowledge somewhere. Maybe like film you cutting someone's hair or <laughs> whatever you want to know. Maybe we could film you doing your new hair. Let us know. Give her ideas please. All my social networking sites are down there and if you're new to this channel you can also subscribe and be notified every time I make a new video. I have Instagram. She has an Instagram, I'll put that down there. If you enjoyed and you want to see another or just more of her, then thumbs up. If there's not many thumbs up then they don't like you. Screw you! Bye guys! <laughs>